Let's talk about radicals, lesson number five, radical equations. Consider the radical expression, the square root of x. On the grid here, let's get to the graph of y equals the square root of x. Okay, well, we could probably use a table of values here and say, all right, if we had x and we had y and we create a table of values and we can say it's zero, the square root of zero is zero, the square root of one is one, Square root of three is approximately 1.73, and let's say square root of four, which is a nice perfect square, the square root of four is equal to two. So if we put those values in, zero, zero, one, one, three is like almost 1.73, some, somewhere there, and then four is two, we could probably create this smooth curve that looks very much like almost one arm of a sideways parabola here. Okay, well, what is the domain of the graph of y equals the square root of x? I think when we talk about domain, we can really say that there's two restrictions that are main restrictions for the domain of x. When we talk about the domain of x, uh, this graph, we really mean the acceptable x values that we're allowed to use that will um, allow for y values to be defined. And so there's two rules in mathematics. One is you cannot divide by zero. Can't divide by zero is a main rule because you wouldn't get a real um, a defined value. And secondly, you cannot you can't take the square root of a negative. And this is the one the one that we'll focus on because we can see a square root here. So when we take the square root of an x, this underneath the radical sign or the um, radicand cannot be negative. So therefore, this x and the whole expression in the radicand has to be greater than or equal to zero. Okay, so that's the domain. And you can see it starts at zero and goes this way. Now, what about the values of x for which the radical expression square root of x is defined? Well, that means it's the x values that will allow us to find a y value. Well, again, it's the same, it's the same thing. X has to be greater than or equal to zero here. Okay, let's consider the expression, uh, the square root of x minus two. Well, again, we can do the square root, uh, or sorry, the table of values, but we can also use our calculator and sketch on our calculator. Well, at least say what the expression is. So let's go to y equals, oh, I already have it here. It's the square root of, let me, let me clear it so I can do it again. We have the square root of x and then minus two, and then we can graph it. Now, sometimes if you can't see the graph, you might want to change the window to make sure that you have a nice window here. So negative five to 10, fair enough. And then if we go down here, maybe we can make our y minimum or, or y maximum maybe just five so that we can see it a little bit better. So there it is, you can see it. Okay, let's make our y minimum uh, something a little bit closer too. So then we can see it. Ah, this looks very nice, there it is. Okay, so again, uh, let's take a look where it started. It looked starts at two zero here though. So right here, and it looks like it has the same shape as that. So uh, one is one over, and then three is like 1.73, and then four over, one, two, three, four, is actually two. So here it looks the same as this one, the same shape, but it seems like it's moved over two. And that's familiar, right? This uh, x minus 2 made everything move over two spots to the right. Let's see what the domain is. Again, there's two restrictions of the domain that we worry about. One is not dividing by 0. The other is not taking the square root of a negative. So that means the whole expression in the radicand, this whole thing, is not allowed to be negative. So it has to be greater than or equal to, oops, let's just erase that because it has to be the whole expression, right? It's the whole expression x minus two, which has to be greater than or equal to zero, which means then that implies that x has to be greater than or equal to positive two. If we add two to both sides here, this is positive two. Okay, for what radical expression, for this radical expression, what is the restrictions on x? Well, x then has to be greater than or equal to positive two. And you can see it on the graph, when you are left of um, positive two, then you don't have any uh, values. In fact, if we go to our calculator and try and find the table here, second table, and find 
we'll notice that when we start at the value of x being two, we get zero. But taking a look at anything that is less than two, we get all these errors that we don't get a, a real answer. And so everything all the way up to two will result in an error. But then once we get two, we get zero, and then we start getting values. Okay, so how do you explain to determine the restrictions algebraically? Well, remember that we cannot take the square root of a negative. So we have to take the radicand. The radicand here has to be, must be non-negative. Now, what does it mean by non-negative? It means that it cannot be negative. And so that means that the radicand, whatever the expression is in the radicand, that part has to be greater than or equal to zero. Well, let's consider the radical expression of the square root of three minus two x, and I believe this goes all the way across. Okay, let's sketch this graph. We might need our, our calculator to help us here. So let's put in y equals, and here inside, we'll say three x, and then, or sorry, I think it was three minus two x, right? Minus two, and using this as a variable is two x. Okay, let's graph that. It looks like it goes this way. And how do you find this value right here? Right here is, it looks like it's between one and two, but I think we can find the restrictions here by looking at the radicand and making sure this whole radicand has to be greater than or equal to zero. So if we add two x to both sides here, and we add two x, then that means then uh, I'll have to move it over here. That means that three is greater than e or equal to two x, and therefore dividing by two x is on the smaller side of three over two. Now I did it in a way where we didn't have to use that rule of inequalities, but there is one rule of inequalities that we need to keep in mind, is that when you multiply or divide by a negative, in an equation with an inequality, sorry, not an equation, but an inequality, then you'll have to switch the sign. For example, if x is greater than five, then if x was equal to five, then the opposite of positive five would be negative five. If we were to multiply by a negative, this negative x would have to be less than negative five. And you could take some time to sink, let that sink in, but of course, the rule for inequalities, if you're multiplying by or dividing by a negative, you'll have to switch the direction of the inequality. I can avoid that by just using addition and subtraction to make the x positive. So let's determine the restrictions algebraically. Oh, I think we, we did that. So here we said x has to be less than, and I'm just rewriting it from left to right here, is x has to be less than three over two. So once again, algebraically, the whole expression in the radicand has to be greater than or equal to zero. I added two x to both sides, and that means that two x has to be less than or equal to three, and dividing by two x then has to be less than or equal to three over two, which we can uh, see, see as 1.5. So what is the, let's see if this was zero, this goes one, two, three, like so, oops, something like that. And why can I know to make sure that it goes through zero, three? Well, if I let x equal zero here, that means, oops, that's not gonna work. We'll have to erase that because the square root of three is like 1.73. So actually this looks like this. How do I know for sure here? If I let x equal zero, then the y will equal the square root of three minus two times zero, which is equal to the square root of three. And we found, I think the decimal approximation was like 1.73 or something like that. So we know it goes uh, through the y-axis just before two. Okay, so radical expressions involving square roots may have restrictions on the value of the variable because the square root of a negative number is not defined. Well, what about radical equations? Now that we have um, functions and, gr and graphs, can we find 
the root of an equation which has a radical in it. Okay, let's algebraically determine the restrictions on these in order as part of solving the equation. So remember that this is equal to one, yes, but remember that we cannot take the square root of a negative. So that means this whole radicand x minus two cannot be negative. So it has to be greater than or equal to zero. So x therefore has to be greater than or equal to two. For b, this four x plus one, which is in the radicand must be non-negative. So that means it has to be greater than or equal to zero. And their four x has to be greater than or equal to negative one because we're subtracting one on both sides and dividing by four, then x will be greater than or equal to negative one over four. Here in part C, the same method again, noticing that we have a radical, we or the square root specifically, is that the radicand cannot be a negative. So two minus five, x has to be greater than or equal to zero. And therefore, if we add five x to both sides, this helps us to avoid the rule about um, multiplying or dividing by a negative. So here we have two is gonna be greater than or equal to five x, which means if we divide by five on both sides, that x is gonna be less than two over five. So again, I use addition and subtraction to avoid that rule about multiplying and dividing by a negative, which would change the direction of the inequality. So again, here, we notice the in index here is three. And in fact, this brings to mind that you can take the cube root of a negative. So let me just show you here. If we took the cube root, um, let's see, second, uh, let's just do math. Oops, just press math. And we have the cube root, which is four, the cube root of a negative number, say negative, um, 27, for, for example, is equal to, and it actually gives us an answer. Whereas, and if we took the square root of a negative, like square root of negative 27, we would have a non-real answer. So that is one of the differences between a square root and a, a cube root, is that you can take the cube root of a negative number, but you cannot take the square root of a number, or sorry, square root of a negative number. So that means that there's no restrictions here at all, right? So that means any X is okay. All right, what if we were to solve radical equations graphically? So taking a look at class example number two, let's consider this radical equation of the square root of X plus one equaling four. We can think of this left side of the equation as one graph, right? And then we can think of the right side of the equation as another graph. So this would be, uh, we call our, this our y2. Okay, well, if we had y2, of course, it's one, two, three, four, and we have this straight line, as straight as I can make it, that's uh, our y equals four, right? Y2 is equal to four. And then going back to our um, y1, the square root of x plus one, would be x plus one makes it move to the left one unit, right? So this is gonna go over here and we have something that looks like this. Oops, something that kind of looks like that. It's, my drawing is not very good, but it goes through there somewhere. And let's see uh, if we can state the values of x for which the radical equation is defined. Now remember, we have a square root, and so therefore that radicand is not allowed to be negative, so it must be greater than or equal to zero, which then tells us then that x has to be greater than or equal to negative one. So which you can see right there is that you only get y, blue y values when x is equal to negative one or more. And we can see if we use our graph and calculator, if we made y one equal to, uh, I believe this was x plus one, and then just delete that. And then uh, if we went to our table, we notice that negative one is okay, but anything above, uh, anything lower than negative one, we're gonna get an error because it's gonna be a non-real answer. So let's go to y equals and make the second y, y two into four. 
And if we graph this, we might be able to see it here. Oh, we'll have to move the window a little bit and uh, say that the X max, maybe we'll make it 20 and uh, see if that fits. Okay, so we can see where these two intersect and that intersection is going to be the answer to X. The solution to this equation is where these two intersect. So let's find the intersection by pressing second trace and finding the intersection, which is number five. We have the first curve there. And just to make sure the second curve should be the other color, or if we might need to toggle back and forth, but make sure it is the other line. And then we can make a guess, we can move it closer. But since there's only one, I'm just gonna press enter here. So then we can see that the intersection happens when the X value is equal to 15, which is the solution to this equal. Uh, equation. So here, uh, explaining how we would have to put make y1 equal to the square root of x plus 1. We made y2 into the, the right side of the equation. And then we use second trace to find the calculation menu, the intersect, and the, in, the x value of the intersection is going to be the answer. So we found that x is equal to 15. Okay, so the state the solution of the equation x is equal to 15 and verify the solutions algebraically. So to verify, we will use a left side right side argument. So we can say that the left side was the square root of x plus 1 and the right side was equal to 50, uh, 4, I think it says. So if it's true that x is equal to 15, then the left side will equal the right side when I put in 15 where I see x. So this is the square root of, uh, let's use 15 here. And then I'm gonna be adding one, which is equal to the square root of 16. And uh, I don't know if we can see this actually. So the left side here in the end after simplification is the square root of 16, and then that is gonna be equal to four. Hey, the right side was also equal to four, and therefore the left side equals the right side. And so therefore x is equaling 15 is a solution. Okay, that completes the first part. Uh, so you can work on the first few questions.